are you feeling like your paintings are a bit flat? Like there isn't much depth to your color or things just feel kind of blech? Well, I've got you. Watercolor and pencil. It's a wondrous place where two mediums mingle in ways you couldn't dream. Recently, I shared my technique for combining graphite with watercolor, and you seem to really like it. So today, I'm giving you a deeper look into how this technique works to impact drama in your art. I mean, we all like a little drama, right? In midsummer, these prickly pear cactus bloom up a storm on my back patio, and today that's what I'm using for my inspiration photo. I hope you'll join me. Let's get started. Supplies. I'm using the Art for Joy's Sake palette today. I'm also using an HB, a 6B pencil, and one of my favorite mechanical pencils. I'll have all the supplies listed below. And for paper, I've chosen Legion Stonehenge cold press watercolor paper. And yes, I'm gonna be using pencil on cold press textured watercolor paper. And you'll see why, because the texture is what's important here. Well, one of the important things. So there's four steps. Number one, we're gonna map out the basic shapes. Number two, we're gonna start roughing in some shading with the pencil. Number three, we're gonna add some watercolor washes. And four, we're gonna repeat all of it, but never in the same order as we started. So basically what that means is we're gonna be working back and forth. Add a little pencil, put a little watercolor over top, some more pencil, and uh, you get the drift. Starting with a basic circle to pinpoint where I'd like this main yellow bloom of the cactus to be, and then also indicating where the center of that flower is. From there, I'm working around the center to rough in the petals. The petals that are on the right-hand side of the screen are kind of curling up towards me, so they're really skinny and oblong, almost like squat green beans. And then the petals that are over to the left of the screen are really blooming out to the other side so they're much larger and more in full view. And then I'm mapping out where I'm going to have some of these cactus buds, if you will, and where the cactus pads will appear. Now, I am working from an inspiration photo, but I use that phrase really lightly because I'm just looking at it for basic placement of shadows, but not for composition. I am making up my own composition here. So if that makes you nervous, you can do one of two things things. You can paint something completely different that you're more comfortable with, but use this technique. Or number two, you can just follow along with me exactly. And that way you don't have to worry about developing a composition on your own. The point is I want you to paint along with me no matter how you swing it. Okay. I don't have this all mapped out, but I don't care. I'm happy with where it's at. I'm going to start adding in some rough watercolor, a little bit of yellow, a little bit of green. The thing I love about painting cactus is that there's so much opportunity for different colors in those cactus pads. So I'm bringing in already three different colors from the Art for Joy Steak palette. There's a fourth and just roughing them in. This is wet on dry. If you want to know more about the wet on dry, wet on wet, and all the different techniques, I have a video I'm going to link below. Check it out. Adding a little bit of a darker green here. It's got a little bit of blue mixed into it and even maybe a little bit of brown. I pulled it off my palette, so who knows? Friends, the point is I'm not not revealing the colors because I don't know their names or I don't know what they are. I'm not revealing exact colors because I want you to feel comfortable using what you have on your palette. So let's continue to rough in here. I'm going to be quiet for a few moments, which is a shocker, I'm sure. And let's see where we land. All right, I've got my first layers in, but I'm bringing out that pencil while everything is still damp. And I'm going right there in the middle where the flower touches that cactus pad. And I'm just using some light shading where I'm basically just stroking my pencil across the surface 
very, very lightly. This is the key. And you're gonna get a lot of drag, especially if your paper is still damp, and you might see some of the paper kind of almost disrupt and kind of break down a little bit. If you see that happen, just back off, let the page dry, and move on to a different area. But the idea here, whether you're trying to work into the damp page, which you can do if you work carefully, or if you're just adding pencil to a dry page, friends, the point is light, light, light touch. Because you wanna glide over the surface, you wanna add shading gradually, you wanna build up from light to dark or dark to light, but whatever you do, you wanna do it gradually. And if you try to go in with a heavy hand, which is often what happens when we're nervous, we press harder on our brush or our pencil. You're gonna have a hard time getting the smooth transitions. Today, the value scale has two purposes for us. Of course, it can teach us about what kind of marks from light to dark that our pencil can make. But the technique of actually building up the dark shadow from our pencil and then lightening up with our pressure is really what I want you to learn today from a value scale. So start with more intense, but focused pressure that isn't so hard that you're indenting the paper. That's the key. You want consistent pressure and you don't want to put an indent in your paper. And if the first few strokes look smooth, but they don't look dark enough, just slowly increase your pressure and continue to go over those areas again and again with that slightly increased pressure. I'd rather you build up layer and layer and layer of graphite to get a nice dark shadow than to try to go all in with a few strokes and make a mess of your paper. But this is the general idea. This is how we're gonna be adding shading today in our painting with our watercolor. Even fluid, consistent strokes with a light pressure, building up for darkness and backing off for lighter areas. All right, back to that cactus. I'm starting to add in with my pencil friends and you might be wondering, how do you decide, Christy, where to add darker shadows? This is the fast and loose answer. You add shadows where one element meets another. So for example, in the middle there where the yellow, skinny yellow petals, remember, you know, the squat green beans, where they meet the pad of the cactus. There's an overlap there and naturally a shadow is created because one of those elements, in this case, it's the flower, is blocking sunlight from the pad of the cactus and therefore you have a darker area. So a general rule is wherever you have some overlap, you can think about adding some shadows with your pencil. It's important here, hear me. I don't want you to get hung up on all of the where's the sun shining and what angle and no. Just kind of go with the general basic rules, at least this time, and see how you feel about this technique. Build up some confidence with just approaching this painting of yours from a very kind of simple, basic approach to shadows. You can always come back and get super sciencey and technical about it in your next painting. But the last thing I want is for you to get frustrated on this time around because if you get frustrated this time around, there might not be a next time. And I certainly don't want that for you. All right, here's where it gets juicy. Yep, I'm bringing in the paint. I'm going right over top here at this bottom area where a little bit of a cactus pad is peeking out from behind the main one. And I'm adding a deep, rich green shadow. Gorgeous using the round brush there with a moderate pressure. And then as I'm creating that stroke, I'm lifting just a little, going over here to the leftmost pad and adding again, another deep, dark greenish blue. It's a little more blue at this point than green. I think I added a little on my brush and gorgeous. Sorry friends, I'm just too excited about this technique. Can you tell? All right, I know we're early on in this, but if you are as excited and you're getting the creative tinglies like I am right now, can you give me a oh heck yes in comments because I hope I'm I'm not alone. I really I really hope I'm not alone. <laughs> and can you also give this video a boop? That's a like. Because I'll be honest, when you give these videos of mine boops, it lets the YouTubes know that you're happy. And when you're happy, they're happy. All right, it's time to bring out the 6B pencil. And so many of you have asked, what's the difference? 6B, 2H, HB? 
Basically, it's the softness of the lead. So it's the perfect middle of the road pencil. It's not too hard, not too soft. Now the 6B that I just pulled out is nice and soft and it's going to make for some beautiful, easy transitions from heavier shadows to lighter. So remember, at this point, I am looking for areas that overlap, looking for opportunity to either add shadows with watercolor or add shadows with pencil. And like I said, it's gonna get juicy cause I'm gonna be going back and forth and really mixing it up and just kind of going with the flow, seeing what happens. There on the right side of that yellow flower, I went in with the tip of my round brush with a really dark green mixed together, whatever green you've got with a little brown, with a little blue, maybe purple, even a Scotia red and then just add a little stroke around that yellow petal, rinse your brush, and then add some clean water right next to that stroke to blend it out into nothing. Back in with the pencil and notice I'm just scrubbing and scratching, but my touch, my pressure is light. The heavier areas that you're seeing on the screen, the heavier graphite areas, I am achieving by building up slowly, layer after layer of graphite from my hand to the page. It's definitely a little bit more of a tedious process, but I find this particular technique, pencil, watercolor, pencil, watercolor, and all the in-between of it to be so meditative. Once you have the basic shapes blocked in and you're happy with them, of course. All right, it's time for me to zip it again and let you just enjoy for a few moments. And some of you might be wondering, well, Chrissy, doesn't the pencil kind of make everything start to look dingy? And friends, it's a great question. And the answer is, yeah, you're going to get a little bit more of a vintage vibe as you see this painting progress. Your shadows are going to have kind of a gray undertone. Everything's going to seem a little more muted, but I really like the vibe. So as long as you set your expectations in the beginning, you won't be disappointed. Now, one thing to notice that, especially in the flower here, my flower is the star of this compositional show, right? So I am adding some graphite areas like here at the top of the flower, but I'm also making sure that a lot of the watercolorness of the flower remains so that things don't get too muddy or dingy. And back we go to the painting. Watch how I add the shading here. I do go in right where the petal meets the pad of the cactus with a dark line. And I am pressing pretty hard because I know I want that connection between petal and pad to be really dark. From there, I decrease my pressure and I do that over and over again until I get this nice dark to light shadow. And back to some roughing in with the pencil cause I just felt right in that moment like I needed another cactus pad. Let's get some of that watercolor wash in there. Now I'm really good at getting off track, but I couldn't keep going without mentioning the pink. I know I'm adding pink to my cactus pad and you're probably like, Christy, what in the world? Friends, just try it. 
It's so good and it's so fun and it makes for some of the coolest color combinations in your greens that you could imagine. All right, I'm gonna shut up for a little while here and let you just watch. But not before I ask you to head into comments and let me know what your questions are. What are your confusions, frustrations? Gosh, is confusions even a word? Anywho, let me know how you're feeling and what you're thinking and where you might need some help with this. Now, as you continue along and you're much further along in the painting, you might be wondering, where do I stop adding detail, darkness, shadows? I mean, you could feel potentially like you could go on and on forever because like I said, this is so meditative and cathartic. Here's what I think about usually at this stage of the painting where I'm like a little bit more than three quarters of the way where I think I might be done. I think about number one, what is my favorite part so far? And right now my favorite part is that yellow flower and the center of the flower. So I'm gonna add a few more exaggerations of shadow there and be done with it. Number two, I think about composition and that's why I'm adding in this little green poof over here on the right. I'm thinking just kind of some general cactus bud detail here, but it's needed for the composition because everything in the middle of the composition started to be pretty much the same size. So I knew I needed some smaller detail. And number three, I look for areas where I just want a little bit more pop, more dimension, more depth. So how do I find those areas? Well, are there parts of this painting that look like they're just flat, where two pieces overlap? I know they overlap because I drew them, but they don't look like they overlap. That's where I would add some final shadows. Friends, I'm pulling that mechanical pencil back out. You might be wondering, how do you decide? HB, 6B, mechanical pencil. The mechanical pencil is great when I really wanna dig in with some fine, delicate detail. And that's exactly where I'm at. I'm wrapping up this artwork and I want to add the final fine detail moments. And the mechanical pencil is perfect for that. And friends, don't forget the smudge. Go ahead in with your finger or a blending stump or a little bit of paper towel, and you can blend out and smudge out some of the pencil that you've added to get a really beautiful smoky transition in your shadows. 
grabbing my liner brush with some dark, dark blue, adding final little bits of shadow in the smaller areas here, scrubbing some of that color on. And what do we mean by scrubbing? It's basically a dry brush technique. There's very little water on my liner brush right now. I'm going around a previously painted shadow and adding some texture by scrubbing that brush along the surface of the paper. A few dashes and dots to suggest a contour or a bulge in the cactus pad. And then a few dark dots where all the pricklies of the prickly pears come out of the cactus pad. Okay, let me know in comments what they're actually called. I know they're not called pricklies, but this technique gives you so much freedom. And here's why. It's incredibly forgiving because you have two different mediums where you can refine, correct small mistakes, even correct big ones. Work back and forth between watercolor and pencil to really kind of sculpt out your shapes and shadows. So for example, if a brush stroke you laid down just doesn't feel like the right shape, well, you can come back in later cut in with a little bit of pencil and some shadow to correct it and make it feel better and more successful. But ultimately, what I hope this technique gives you is the confidence to dive deeper into sketching, drawing, illustration. This next video is gonna walk you through how to illustrate over six different flowers and leaf fillers, and you're gonna love it. You're ready for it now. Friends, until next time, happy painting and sketching.